Our journey through the Bible has brought us this week to 1 Timothy chapter 4. And so we encourage you to read it over, study it carefully. Join with us tonight at 7 o'clock as we gather to study the Word of God. We'll be studying 1 Timothy chapter 4 as we go straight through the Bible. This morning we'd like to draw your attention to verses 12 and 13 of the fourth chapter of 1 Timothy, where Paul is exhorting Timothy to let no man despise your youth, but be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. And until I come, give attendance to reading and to exhortation and to doctrine. Be thou an example, example Paul said. Now, Timothy was a young man, and uh, I guess there was a tendency of some not to really receive from him because of his youth. It's harder sometimes for older people to listen to young men. And so Paul is saying, look, just be an example to them. Let your life speak to them. Be an example of the believers. Now, you oftentimes hear this quoted as be an example to the believers. And in some of the translations, it actually reads, be an example to the believers. And interestingly enough, the Greek word will accept either translation. It is possible to translate this from the Greek, be thou an example of the believers, or it is also possible to translate it, be an example to the believers. And both are correct. The one would say, be an example of the believers. That is, before the world. We live before the world. They're observing us. They're observing us even when we're not aware of it. And as you are living before the world, be an example of what the believer is or what the believer is to be. But then, be thou an example to the believers. Uh, Timothy is in the ministry. And as a minister, Timothy, let your life be an example to the believers of what the Christian life is all about. If they won't accept your word, be an example to them. Live it out before them. Let them see it in your life. Be an example to the believers. So it can be read either way. Both of them would be acceptable with the Greek and both of them would be correct. We should be examples of the believers to the world. We should be an example to the believers within the body. Paul is telling Timothy to be an example of the believers, first of all, in word. Now, this also has two possible interpretations, and in the New Testament, it is translated two different ways. Be an example of the believers in your word, in your language, or be an example to the believers or of the believers in your knowledge and understanding of the word. Be a man of the word. Now, looking at it as far as our language, be an example to the believer in our language, filthy language never becomes a child of God. The Bible says, let no filthy communication proceed out of your mouth. I grew up in a very godly home for which I thank God for the heritage, the Christian heritage that I have.
Both my mom and dad were deeply committed to serving the Lord. And as I was growing up, sometimes uh, I would bring words home that I would hear my friends using. Words like gosh and darn and by golly. And I would use those words at home and my mother would say, son, you shouldn't use those words. They are just substitute words for words that are actually worse. So you shouldn't use those because it's just a short little distance between the slang and between saying the word itself. And so uh, I grew up uh, really watching my language not using even slang. Now, be thou an example uh, to the believers. You know, you never know when someone is watching you. Or you never know when someone is listening to you. And they're sort of getting the idea of what a believer is by what they see and hear from you. Growing up without slang, when I was in sixth grade, I worked at a golf driving range called Pierpont Driving Range in Ventura. I would pick up the balls uh, out uh, that the guys had driven in the afternoon, had a little golf club with a tin can on the end and learned how to scoop them up and put them in the basket, and I'd go out and pick up the golf balls. And the old man who ran the uh, golf cl uh, driving range there many times would take off at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon and let me handle the business and uh, uh, pick up the balls and close the place up at night. Uh, there was only a dime a bucket at that time. And uh, so there would be many times that I, I got a dime a day, too, for working there. And uh, uh, there would be many times that uh, I would be the one dispensing the balls in the afternoon, collecting the funds and things of that nature, though I was just a sixth grader at the time. And I remember that at our church we had an evangelist that came to speak. And so I gave him the bucket of balls, and I was watching him as he was driving. He wasn't a very good golfer. And uh, in swinging at the ball, he hit and took out a big divot, and the ball just sort of rolled off the end of the tee. And he said, ah, rats. And so when I went home, I said, Mom, is rats a bad word? <laughs> He didn't know who I was. He had no understanding, you know, but watching. You don't know when someone is watching. And so you're to be an example in your words. No filthy communication. You're to be an example also in the word. Gaining knowledge and understanding of the word of God. As Paul wrote to Timothy in the second letter, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Timothy, you're a young man. Don't let anybody despise your youth, but be an example. Your knowledge and your grasp and your understanding of the word, let it be an example to the people. Be an example, Timothy, in your conversation. Now, this word has changed with usage through the years from what it used to mean. We think of conversation, or if we talk of conversation now, uh, we say, well, I had a conversation with him last night. You know, he called on the phone and 
we had a conversation together and he told me this and I told him that and, and we were talking about an exchange with each other in words. It was our conversation. But the word originally in the English language meant more than just talking with someone else. The, the word meant in your whole demeanor, the manner in which you live. And this could be rightly translated, be thou an example of the believers in your behavior, in your whole lifestyle. Let your lifestyle be an example of what a believer is. And it isn't do as I say kind of a thing, but it is do as I do. Paul the Apostle said, be ye followers after me, even as I follow after Jesus Christ. Let your life, your total life, be an example of the believers. My life should set an example for how a child of God should live. And then Paul said, Be thou an example of the believers in your love. The Greek word here translated love is an interesting word. It's translated charity in our King James Bible, but the word charity again has changed through usage. The word used to mean the generosity and giving to one who is in need out of a heart and motivated by love. And so we got the word charity. It is one who gives generously, gives freely because of his heart of love. Now it's come to mean, you know, allowing them to take a dollar out of my paycheck for the United Fund, you know, and uh, giving to uh, these various causes for the poor. Uh, my charity uh, giving is something that is oftentimes sort of looked upon as an obligation or something under pressure, but it isn't something that's sparked or motivated by a great love. And, and so uh, the, the word agape in Greek does speak of a quality of love that is above the physical or emotional level. A love that is rich, a love that is deep, a love that is complete, a love that is pure. And so Paul defined this word agape in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I think that it is a good exercise for the believers. I do it at least once a month. Read 1 Corinthians 13 over again. Just to remind me of what I'm supposed to be and what I'm supposed to do and how I'm supposed to love. For Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 13, as he is defining for us this quality of love, love suffers long and is kind. Love envies not. Love does not vaunt itself. It is not stuck up. Love doesn't behave itself in a weird way. Love does not seek its own way. Love doesn't get provoked. Love does not think evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Love rejoices in truth. Love bears all things. It puts up with everything. Love believes all things. And love hopes all things. And love never fails. And then I read it through the second time and I take out the word charity and I insert my own name to check my progress. Chuck suffers long and is kind. Chuck envies not. Chuck does not vaunt himself. He's not stuck up. He doesn't behave himself in a weird fashion. And he doesn't seek his own way. Chuck isn't provoked. <laughs> he doesn't get provoked? Huh, well, work on that one, you know. 
Okay, laugh, but put your name in there and see how far you get. <laughs> but be an example, Paul says to Timothy, in this love. Let this kind of love emanate from your life. And then Paul said to Timothy, be an example in spirit. You know, there are people that have such a sweet spirit. And then there are people who are mean-spirited. You know, it, it, it's interesting how mean-spirited some people are. I get letters from them quite often. <laughs> And as I read, I realize this person must be absolutely miserable. They have so much anger, so much bitterness, so much hatred pent up inside. And, and so they're wanting to give vent to it. And I usually just say, God help them as I put the thing in the shredder. I'm so thankful I don't have to live around those kind of people that I can be around you. It's, I love it. The interesting thing about these letters is they are so often judgmental, critical, and condemning. And Paul said, who is he that condemneth? And the conclusion is, the devil is the one who condemns. So I often think, well, got another letter, letter from the devil today. Just shred the baby. If you are mean-spirited, I, I would recommend that you go to another church. <laughs> I don't think that, you know, you're going to like it here at all it's sort of like the old farmer who was sitting on the porch in his rocking chair this car came driving up full of people mattress on the roof trailer behind with furniture stacked high they rolled down the window of the car and they called to the farmer and they said what kind of people live around here he said, what kind of people live where you come from? He said, oh, they were mean, cantankerous, ornery folk. He said, well, that's just kind of people live around here. <laughs> and so they drove on. Another car drove up. Same thing. Mattress on the roof and furniture in the trailer obviously moving. And they said, what kind of people live around here? Farmer said, what kind of people live where you come from? Oh, they were the sweetest, most generous, most wonderful people you could ever hope to be around. He said, that just kind of people live around here. <laughs> you see, your problem is that you have to take yourself with you wherever you go. <laughs> and if you are mean, and if you're mean-spirited, you'll find that, hey, that just follows you wherever you are. But if you're kind and sweet, you'll find that that's what you'll discover wherever you go. It's not really in the others, it's in you. And so we're to be an example of the believers in our life, in our spirit. Now be honest, if you are choosing someone to go out and have coffee with <laughs> and you have your choice between a mean-spirited person and a sweet-spirited person uh, who are you going to choose? <laughs> Paul said be an example in spirit in your attitudes in the way you look at things there are those who have a critical spirit and 
That's to me always a sad thing when I see a person beginning to lapse into a critical spirit. Because once you get into that critical mode, you have the tendency to criticize everything. I find that there are people who listen carefully to my tapes, not to learn, but to find something where I maybe made a mistake and to criticize. And they're just searching for something to find fault with, something to criticize. And it's tragic when a person gets in that critical spirit because once you become skilled at criticizing, once you become good at criticizing, you're seldom good for anything else. You just become critical of everything. Then Paul is telling Timothy to be an example in his faith. Now this also has a double meaning in the Greek, the original word. It can speak of faith, or trust in the promises of God, in the word of God, in God himself. Your faith in God, you've put your trust in him. Be an example of one who has put their trust in God. But the word also can mean and is translated as trustworthiness or faithfulness. Be an example in trustworthiness be someone that other people can trust be faithful be true to your word as jesus said let your yea be yea and let your nay be nay if you say yes then do it be a person of your word be trustworthy and i believe that both of them are applicable here as Paul said to Timothy, be an example in faith, that that is to be an example in trust and faith in God and in the word of God. And it's also be an example, Timothy, to the believers of faithfulness, fidelity. Faith in God and in the word of God can produce such marvelous fruit. In Hebrews chapter 11, that chapter that deals with the men of faith, it gives us examples of what faith can accomplish and what faith can do. The writer said, who through faith, talking about these men of faith, they subdued kingdoms, they wrought righteousness, they obtained the promises. They stopped the mouths of lions. They quenched the violence of fire. They escaped the edge of the sword. Out of weakness, they were made strong. They waxed valiant in fight. They turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. The glorious exploits accomplished because a person had put his faith and his trust in God and in the promises of God. But also, we need to be an example in faithfulness. To be faithful to your word, trustworthy. And then finally, Paul says, be an example in purity. Timothy was a young man. He was not married. He lived in an extremely pagan society with loose morals. The opportunities for licentious living abounded in the Roman and Greek culture. Prostitution was a very common thing. In Ephesus, where Timothy was at this time, 
the temple of Diana, the goddess of love, had hundreds of young women who were the priestesses of Diana who were nothing more than prostitutes. And all you had to do is go to the temple and engage in any kind of sexual activity that you might be interested in. In his second letter to Timothy, Paul said, flee fornication. And, and it was Im important to live a life of purity in the midst of that corrupt society. And so Paul is encouraging Timothy, be an example, Timothy, in purity. Live a life that is beyond reproach. Live a life of holiness. Be an example in purity. The message of Paul has universal application for every age and for every Christian. We are to be an example of the believers to the world that is wondering about Christianity. And we are to be an example to the believers of what it is to be a servant of Jesus Christ. These things that Paul tells Timothy to be an example in are actually traits of the Christian life. These are characteristics that should mark the child of God. This is how we should live and this is how we ought to live. Our manner of life, our word, the knowledge of the word, in our faith, in our love, and in purity. Throughout the New Testament, these are the characteristics that we are exhorted to possess and to demonstrate. As a Christian, this is how I am to live. Peter wrote a parallel kind of exhortation, again listing Christian characteristics. He expands a little bit from what Paul has said. In his second letter, he said, whereby there is given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might become partakers of the divine nature, that we might become like Jesus. And as he describes the characteristics of the divine nature, he said, beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to your virtue, knowledge, and to your knowledge, self-control, and to your self-control, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. Characteristics that should mark our lives. And he went on to say, and if these things be in you and abound, they will cause that you will neither be unfruitful or barren in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But if you lack these things, you are blind, you're nearsighted, you've forgotten that God has cleansed you from the old sin. Wherefore, rather, brothers, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, that is, these things that he describes, you shall never fall, but you will have an abundant 
entry into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ ministered unto you. And so Peter's exhortation to them towards these same characteristics. And he said, you know, I don't want to be negligent in reminding you of these things. There are certain things that we need constant reminding about. We, we seem to lapse so easily into carelessness. And we need continual remembrance. And, and so Peter said, uh, I think that as long as I'm living, I'm going to have to remind you of these things. And so I'm actually writing them down now because I'm not going to be living much longer, so I'm going to write them to you. So even after I'm gone, you'll still be reminded that this is how you ought to live. This is how you ought to be. These are the characteristics that ought to mark your life as a child of God. Paul told Timothy, until I get there, Give yourself over to the word and to exhortation and to doctrine. Give yourself. So, you see, the word of God is associated with the Christian character. It is the word of God planted in our hearts that forms the Christian character. Jesus said, now you are clean through the word that I have spoken unto you. And the word of God planted in our hearts brings forth the fruit of righteousness from our lives. It's very important what you put in to your brain. In the computer industry and computerese and so forth, they have the old term garbage in, garbage out. And your brain is like a computer. And if you put garbage in, garbage is going to come out. The Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. And if you're sowing to your flesh, then of your flesh you're going to reap corruption. But if you're sowing to the Spirit, then of the Spirit you're going to reap this quality of life. The age-abiding life. It's a quality of life. Described by these traits and characteristics that Paul is encouraging Timothy in. And so, the Word of God. Sow it into your heart. Study it. And you know, that's the secret of what's happening here. The transformations that each of us are experiencing as we study the Word of God together. That's why being a pastor here has to be the greatest experience anyone could have in the world. To be around such wonderful, glorious, loving people. It's just God's Word working in our hearts, transforming our lives, into the image of Jesus Christ so that when we go out, our lives become an example of the believers where we're working, where we go to school, to our neighbors. Our lives become an example of love, holy living, purity, as we are being changed into the likeness of Jesus. Father, we thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit and the work of your word in our lives today. And for the privilege and opportunity, Lord, of reading, studying, to show ourselves approved unto God. Lord, let us be an example in our understanding of the word. Help us to be an example, Lord, in our faith, in our love, in the characteristics of our life, our whole manner of living, in purity. Oh, Lord, make us pure even as you are pure. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Shall we stand? Big challenge. Being an example of our Lord before the world, manifesting His characteristics to the world. Can't do it on your own. We need the help and the power of the Spirit of God and the Word of God working in our lives. And so may that be the case in your life this week. As, as the verse of that song goes, Fill with thy spirit till all shall see Christ only always living in me. And may that be the case in your life this week. Filled with the Spirit, an example of the believer to this world.